Are we up and running? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Bit of a grey day today here. Forecast is for rain, but it is still muggy, muggy, muggy hot. Story in my newspaper this morning. I don't know, you know the rule, record-breaking temperatures, but record-breaking long, long summer. It's never been like this before in the third week of September. And the projection is the hot, muggy weather is going to continue until about halfway through October. Crazy, crazy new weather for us. I've got no idea what kind of a winter it will be. If, if the pattern continues, it would be a, a dry winter, not so much rain and snow. We'll see. Someone says hello from Edmonton. My God, Edmonton. When was I there, Edmonton? We moved to Edmonton in 1957. 57. <laughs> 1957. It sounds like when I was growing up, you know, there were dates and dates were what they were. But every now and then you'd read a date in your history book about something happened in the 1800s, you know. And now to me, when I see a date like that, 1957, that to me sounds like a date from the history books. That's when we moved to Edmonton. So. <laughs> We lived on the Groat Road at first. Okay, we have a mixed, mixed stream today. Mixed stream. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different jobs on the list here, including show and tell. We may not get to all of them. It's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's kind of a catch up, fix, uh, catch up lots of stuff today. Let's just dig through. So those of you who are, are here to see some steady carving, we will do a bit of carving. Maybe we'll finish the last block of the rabbit set. Someone says, I was in school by 57. Well, me too. I'd already been in school for two years by then. Whatever. So. Okay, what's first? First is an easy one. I have what's called a sudi haunt. Those of you who know a little bit of Japanese might get confused by this. The first character is suri, as in printing. It's, the, the, uh, it's not the one used for commercial printing with the printing press these days, but it's the character used for the printing in the old days as we do this. And hon, as you know, if you're one of the first characters you learn, means book. So this looks like a printed book. Des means is. It says printed book. It's not a printed book. It's a colloquial use of the word, of the word surihon. Surihon is what printers use to describe the package of finished prints in any batch. And this is how Chiharu-san, one of our hired gun outside printers in Nagano Prefecture, it's how she labels the prints she sends back to us. It's the traditional way. Here is my surihon. Here's the batch of prints that I've just finished for you. So it's not a book about... Oh, Rangaksha is here. Rangaksha was here last night. And he is, I guess, on the way to the airport as we speak, I think. When I chatted with him yesterday, will you be dropping in the stream? He said, well, I'll be on the train on the way to the airport. So I don't know. Rangaksha was here last night. We had his block. We had some paper ready. And we had a kind of a fun little printing session. Video at... 9 o'clock, 8.30, 8.45. Let's see how the stream goes. On my list of things this morning are two short video clips from last night's fun. And the print is fabulous. The print is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> the first, I didn't catch the whole thing on video. I know, actually, we started fooling around. I got the camera ready. We started fooling around. And I forgot to turn the camera on, you know. And then partway through, we're doing this. And I realized, oh, shoot, i got to get some video for, for tomorrow's stream. So you missed the best part. The best part for me was this. We had got the thing ready. I got the block. I did some printing first for this thing. I had some test paper. And we threw some pigment on the block. We'll, we'll tell the story a bit later. Anyway, I, made, I pulled a rough impression first with test paper and pulled it off the thing, and I really, really wish we'd had a camera on his face. Because <laughs> it was just so much fun. Just so much fun. 
And then I took a couple more prints and he took a couple of prints and we'll see some video of it later. But uh, it was really, really fun. And I remember, you know, the same thing must have happened to me when I first came to Japan. I'd done my own printing and carving, but my own experiments had been sort of like whatever. But the first day that I had one of my rudimentary blocks actually printed by, you know, a real printer, oh my God, I remember the guy just went bang, 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 bang. This is Matsuzaki-san, who is actually not one of the top gun printers in town, but whatever, whatever, he was head and head and head and shoulders above me. He goes bang, 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 pulls it off. And oh my freaking God, it's just incredible. It was so different from what I'd been able to, uh, able to do myself. So it was this, it's fun for me to be able to pass this kind of experience on to other people. Look at these magnificent, magnificent prints. Oh my God, look at this. This lady just keeps outdoing herself every step of the way every step of the way. <sighs> Look at this. These blocks now are, how old are they? We carved this for the Kickstarter campaign. We, I carved this for the Kickstarter campaign. It will be 2012. Real rush job. Bang, bang, bang. I must have carved the whole set in a couple of weeks. I did the first batches of printing for the Kickstarter. And ever since then, we've been passing it around to our, our in-house printers. And this is uh, Chiharu-san. And if you think that's easy to print a deep, rich sky, it's not a black sky, it's a dark gray sky. If you think it's easy to print that and leave those stars, look at this. Look at the size of these stars. Where are we here? If you think it's easy to print something like this and leave those stars without filling up with paste, then if I get a bridge, I want to sell you because you'll believe anything. She's done an absolute fabulous job. The colors are balanced, they match, the registration is perfect. And this block now, I don't know how many we've made. This will be, whatever, I'd have to look it up, 14, 1500, 1600 copies we've pulled of this. Maybe more, maybe pushing 2000 by now. And I still just wonderful. It's so cool to be working with people like that who can just do this. You send them a stack of paper, piece of wood and a sample and she, 10 days later this is what she sends you. I'll count them up after the stream. We'll uh, tell Yamada-san to get on it and he will send a check. He will make the payments straight away to her. Look at this. Dosa by Dave and what I did too because I knew she was going to have, an, have a challenge to do this sky. What I did is before I sent her the paper, actually Taran-san helped with this. Taran-san was here that day. I was really rushed for time. Before I sent her the paper, I calendared every sheet. And actually, Taran-san came over, and I think he took, he took over. I started the calendar job, and then Taran-san finished off. So there's a combination here. I did the sizing. Taran-san did the calendaring, of which more later. And there we have it. These are now going to go to Jed. They will be sent over to Utah for Jed and he will inspect them. Ha 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 ha. Sign them and seal them and out they go to the world. She's put a few at the back with her little mark of yare. I see one, two, three. Can we look at these without embarrassing her? These are the three copies that she feels are not perfectly ready for shipping out. I think we can do this without embarrassing. Probably what they are are the first three sheets where she's getting the color mixed, playing with the registration. Can we find the reason for rejecting this? Yare is her, her it's a traditional printer's way of saying this is a rejected copy. Okay, I think I see it. We've got this. She was still, it'll be one of the first few sheets she did, and she was still getting the registration worked out. There's a tiny bit of registration on this guy. Yeah, same thing too, look. The registration here on this. A little bit, the brown is pushing up out of it. On our next one, this is also marked as Yari. That registration is fixed. 
Oh, here we are. Do, do, do. Look at this. She, she's hit the barrel. This is funny. She must have been watching TV or something. <laughs> she's printing, 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 printing. The kid talks to her. She says, yeah, well, whoops. And she'll pop, hit with the barrel in here. And that's when the printer is like, ah, shit, moment. Because one tiny, 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 tiny seconds of inattention, and you've lost yourself the four or 5,000 yen fee that you would get for printing this one. And I've lost a piece of paper. Tiny bit of inattention. We don't charge the printers for this. Some workshops do that. If they send, oh, here, look at this. You can, this one, must, this must be sheet number one. There we are, look at this. The registration is way off on the back, and the registration is way off on this one. Oh no, it's off on every, okay, what this is then? Look at this. The registration's off on every color. The green is high, the brown is high, and the, the sky is high. So this one, when she put this, when she printed the key block, it must have been low. Yeah, the key block, when she put it in the registration corner, this is interesting, well, we, of course we all, we all do this. When she put it in the corner, before hitting with the baron, the paper must have slipped, I'm gonna exaggerate, the paper must have slipped out of the registration mark by like 0.2 millimeter. And she wouldn't notice it at the time, but then when she came to do the first color, the key block is in the wrong place. So she would have probably put this sheet at the top of her stack to use for color planning and color testing. So these are actually her mistakes. So I've lost the cost of three sheets of paper. We don't charge them. There's no way we do that. But there are print workshops. If they send the printer, whatever, 110 sheets of paper, and they only 107 prints come back, they charge the printer for this. We do not and will not and cannot ever, ever, ever do that. There we go. Good, 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 good. I say we, but it's actually you, because we have that thing we have on our website called a trainee premium. Oh, somebody's outside. Did we catch who it was? Was he showing us something? I didn't see it, actually. Whatever. I'll like, take a look in the video, uh, the BMD. Okay, talk, 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 talk. Let's do some work. Let's do a bit of carving on this. As I said, there are seven jobs on the desk this morning. Let's move to some actual work. There's too much you know, talking going on and not enough working going on. Oh, he was showing the stream on his phone. I get you, I get you. iMac40, it was me. Do we know who you are? I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why didn't you come in and say hello? <laughs> Whatever. watching the stream outside. Is the shop closed? Come and say hello if you want. The shop doesn't open till 10, but the front door is open. It's not locked. Drop in for a minute and say hello. I don't care. If you don't mind. I don't have the other camera set up. Anyway, he can, he can come into the Ayano spot and say hello for a minute, at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Come, you know the Ayano spot? Come and say hello. How's it going? I guess. Who are you? Who are you? I'm Ian. Ian, you're... Uh, yeah, I'm here for work. Oh, I'm pleased here. to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Are you a regular, like... I, I, I view the stream sometimes. It's mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. on the west coast where I am in the U.S. So, so. you interferes with working time or whatever? Yeah, it is. So, so I, I like if I'm at my desk, I'll like put it on as I work. Gotcha, gotcha. And you're not worried about the boss seeing you do this no, or something? No, or? no, no. I'm normally <laughs> there way past when my boss has left. So. <laughs> what do you do? Is it you say programming or something? Is it? I'm a I'm a, a physics uh, PhD student. Physics PhD student. Yeah. Like figuring out how the universe works. Yeah. And, well, it's a, I do experimental work, so it's a lot of like, like, kind of like looking at uh, basically like how to build experiments and stuff. I do um, like quantum wait, gravity experiments. Are we like talking hadron collider type stuff? Or whatever? Uh, I mean, what, what? Big big experiments, kind of like that. I work on LIGO, which is detects gravitational waves. Remind me, L I G O. Uh, is that the one yeah. that's under the ice on the South Pole, the Antarctica? No, that's. Oh, that's that, neutrinos. Yeah, yeah, that's neutrinos. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Ligo is a big. So many of these things going yeah. on. I'm sorry. There's there's a Japanese one called Kagura, 
which is in the mountains by Toyama. That's where I was uh, before this for this work trip. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. So you're still in an academic environment at yeah, the moment. Yeah. Now. What's the getting... future though? Can you like how do you get a job yeah. looking for hopefully, gravitation waves? Hopefully, I know. hopefully being a professor. Back in an academic environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there must be lots of people competing for these kind of positions. Yeah. So uh, you can go into like industry, like a lot of like chip manufacturers and like people who do like very technical kind of like engineering jobs will hire people like that. Right. So yeah. general background in physics is yeah. enough to cover that kind of a yeah. requirement. Interesting. That's very Interesting. Cool. I'm sorry, I didn't awesome. hear. You're in Japan is it for fun or you're here? I'm, I'm here for, I was here for a conference in Toyama and then mm -hmm. I added on like an extra like 10 days to the end. This is the one thing that I was like planned around was, was coming here to see us. Was coming so, here to so. see the shop and everything. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching you for like, oh God, like. Mm. You're not all that years. old. <laughs> yeah, over <laughs> so, six years, so. over six years. Since the, the beginning stream. of the Great Wave. Ah, uh, yeah, we were, we've only been, we've been streaming what, seven years? Or yeah, so? no, I, I was watching remember. YouTube before the. I see, yeah. okay, okay. Well, thanks for the yeah. interest. I don't know, yeah. what can I say? I won't, I won't interrupt the stream anymore. I'm, yeah. I assume I'm less interesting than uh, carving here. But everybody okay. drops in, so yeah. I, I didn't actually catch what was happening. You, you showed something. Well, yeah, because I didn't want to disrupt the stream too much, mm. but I thought mm. it'd be kind of funny to show the stream on gotcha, the stream. Gotcha, 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 okay. So I, like, yeah. I pulled it up and I like showed it to the camera. I just missed it and people were talking about what's happened. Yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so. yeah that's a great community. Okay. The reason we've been, you know, people coming at this time of year, like, why are you in Japan at this time of year? Oh, but your reason long. was pinned to the yeah, conference. Yeah, I had to, so, I had to come for the conference. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, well, even though it's hot and like mm. really humid, I'll mm. make sure I stop here. Oh, well, thanks very yeah. much for taking the time and trouble to do this. Yeah. I'll come back and like look when you're actually open. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. I haven't seen any comments about you, whatever. Yeah, whatever, yeah. we can have a look at them later. So, so much brain power, it says. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Sounds like you cut, 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 you got some cred by. Uh, oh, well, there you go. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Well, me too. Actually, it's funny though. You know, the the people who do come in, yeah, you know, the YouTube viewers or Twitch viewers, whatever. And every day, there's two, three, four, or, or more people, and we chat just like this. And it really, really seems like a high proportion of these people, compared to the general population, are doing exactly the same kind of thing you are. You're doing, I don't know, you know, uh, physics research or academic research or PhD on something else or something like this. You know. I, I personally, what, like when, when I started seeing the Great Wave, uh, like Prince, uh, there was like one of the Great Wave episodes where you like basically try to like date each of the prints in comparison with all the other like museums. Uh. And I really loved that episode because like it was so clear to even me like exactly why like this print was earlier than that print and such that I was like, I was like so floored by this. That like I even like I showed that episode to like my like art history professor mm -hmm. in college, and I showed it to like my friends who are doing PhDs in art history, and I was like, why is like no one like like look this is like an obvious thing like it's so clear that like one is like like it's it's such like a mm. like great analysis uh, that was really why I was drawn. Well, to it. yes and no. I mean, of course, the the things I've said there in those videos they actually don't cut any mustard with the academic world. And I'm not like, I'm not bitter about this. I don't know, because one, I have no degree and I'm not trained in all that kind of stuff. All I know is the point of the knife and looking yeah, at this, that, you know. This was my big problem with, like, like I, because I, I showed it to my professor and they're like, oh, like this guy. Yeah, some dude on the internet. That's yeah, right. Of exactly. course, of course, of course. But I was like, I was like, but like the points he's making are like very clear. Like, mm. That has to be like mm. the answer, unless mm. there's something like mm. really crazy. Mm. And so I was like, and so happy when I saw like the British Museum, uh, like episode, not not the one that you did, but the one before that, where they're like, oh, there was mm. like this guy on the internet who mm. like said these things, mm. and I was like, that's Dave. Like I know mm. who they're talking about. And but also, so but happy. the conclusions she has come to are pretty much opposite to mine. You know, we we she in our in friendly way have talked about a lot of these things, and I've said there it is, and she says no, that's evidence for the other way. That's evidence of block wear, and I'm saying well no, block can wear, but they can't turn a left corner into a right. You know whatever. Yeah. So, so. But because of the status of the people on that side, their version cuts a bit more credibility than some do it on the internet. That's okay. So I don't care if I'm putting out the information and, yeah. the, and the, the chat and the ideas that I have, and that's all anybody can do, put the ideas into yeah. the mix and let it get mixed up and the next generation can then yeah. use better tools maybe even to start looking yeah. at these sort of things. I, I really like that. Also, there was that project you did like a million years ago where you sent off a block to get like, like not cast in metal, but yeah, that was very cool. It's here. 
people ask about that all the time. Really? So it, it's here in the shop. It's over That's there in that plastic package because lots of people ask about it. Can I possibly maybe perhaps even get to see that? So it's here. That's very cool. So yeah, if we drop back like in. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll let you get to it. Yeah, better do some work, I guess. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Again, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I already... You're, you're, your your name name is okay just yeah, yeah my my name's Ian Ian okay yeah. that's right all right hello everyone okay then now that we'll know yeah. who you are we I'll can come see back when the shop's <laughs> okay. open. thanks for dropping in Bye. thank you more physics researchers the place is crawling with them it's crazy something about what we do attracts a certain kind of person doing a certain kind of work I guess interesting. Where were we? Yes. This has become I know, one of the most fun parts of my life these days, actually. And also, it's also a little bit of a, a paradox now and a problem for us. It, this wasn't happening before, before COVID. Of course, people came in before COVID. People came in who had seen YouTube or who had seen the documentary video about our work. They said hello, and then, then they left. But it's dramatically different now in this new wave of tourism. There's many, 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 many more people coming in. And in fact, just exactly like Ian here, people from all walks of life or from that academic environment who really have taken the time and trouble to actually come here because they want to, just for a few minutes even, to, to see this place, see me, and get a little bit of a personal touch about the things we're doing. And it's become a thing. It's become a thing. It's daily part of my life now that at the end of the day, when it's all over and the shop's closed and this is out and all staff's gone home, they go upstairs and I sit there. And I've had the experience, you know, three, four, five, six times during the day of people like this, somebody who uh, obviously, you know, you respect as, as a typical person in life who thinks that this was worth seeing and I was worth meeting and I was worth talking to for a few minutes. And Ian has been just normal here, but some people are quite effusive sometimes. And at the end of the day, to have been the recipient of this kind of, of feedback day after day after day after day, six days a week, you know. And it sort of changes you and you start like, who am I and why am I doing it? And the thing that I think I am, the guy who chops wood at the point of a knife and just doing this and trying to keep the business going, and other people have such a different view of it. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling, but at the end of the day, you sit there and like, who am I? What do I think my position in this universe is? And it seems to be different from what other people think, you know. I don't know, whatever. Nothing negative, of course, nothing to, to have people uh, approve of what you're doing and like what you're doing and want to see you and meet you is a cool thing. But it's now so pervasive, it's getting a bit funny to deal with, you know. Of course it's gratifying. It's, it's like a little kid, you know. We've got a little kid and mom says, oh, you're doing a good job, good boy, good boy, good boy, you know. And I get this all day long from, from adults, you know. The other thing you try and remember is, okay, Dave, not everybody likes you. And the people who don't think you're doing a good job or who don't like your presentations, they're not here. So remember, they're out there. It's not the entire world who loves what you're doing. You're hearing a very selected group of people who have taken the time and trouble to come here. So there's that side of it too, you know, of course. I don't see the downsides. Anyway, anyway, enough of that. And I missed that one. I, I lost my chance. I didn't recognize his project. I had just finished reading a while ago about that one in the Antarctic. I guess that's right. That's a neutrino detector. So that one was top in my mind. I didn't recognize the project that he's been on. Got to do some homework tonight. Look it up. Because I really like to be able to keep up my end of the conversation when people are here, and like, no matter what they're doing, I, I want to, to, it's part of ego, I guess, I want to recognize what it is they're doing and show that I'm not a complete dummy about it and stuff like that. But in the case of his project, no, I struck out. I didn't recognize uh, his project at all. So.
This is, for those who don't know what's going on here, this is one of the blocks for our gift print that we will be publishing this year. And it's supposed to go somewhere in the middle of September. And we're now in September 21st. So this is going to be my, uh, my priority now for the next few days. Kawasaki-san, our carver in Kobe, carved what, we were, what we're calling the key block. There's a pattern for a rabbit and some waves. I carved a wave pattern block that will go with this. And now this is the highlight block for some ears and nose. And I think there's something over here, a foot or something I didn't get the other day. Uh, this now pretty much has to be finished today. I'm going to be doing this all today if I get a chance during the, during the shop day. And then one of our printers, maybe Yuki-san, the new girl from China maybe, she will maybe do some quick test printing and we'll try and work it out. And if it looks good to go, we've got to get some uh, batch of these ready and get it ready for our catalog somewhere now around the end of September. Some people, as they grow older, seek interaction and conversation with others. It's a ton of fun, you know. I mean, we didn't have any deep conversation here, just a touch. How are you? What are you doing? What's going on? You know, sometimes the conversations, if, like if, if this hadn't been on stream, Ian had come in during the afternoon, I think I would have uh, asked for more information about his work and we would have gone around and around. If he had the time and it had been pretty quiet, we would have talked, or maybe we will next time he comes back in. So I really, really, really do enjoy these conversations. Although part of it, I do have to recognize the defect in my character Part of it actually is, again, it comes back to ego. Dave likes to sit here and no matter who comes in and no matter what kind of job that person has and starts talking about, I do like to be able to hold up my end of the conversation. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to show that, oh yeah, I, I know about that stuff, good, explain a bit more to me, you know, whatever. And that's obviously a, coming back to the same thing. It's still the same ego at the bottom, you know. Look how cool I am. No matter how smart you are, I can still know what you're talking about. That's this kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's there, it's there. Matt Brown one day, Matt Brown, the printmaker in uh, New Hampshire. I was visiting him a lifetime ago, a generation ago. It would have been 1990-something, I can't remember. We were talking about life, the universe, and everything, and, and on the visit over there. And I, I don't even know how the conversation went, but I do remember at one point of it, at one point in our conversation, you know, in, in like, why are we doing what we're doing, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, the concept of uh, praise from other people came up and uh, and he was the thing talking about ego and he had a great great way to to describe when you're trying to describe your own feelings and how much is is your own ego and you want to feel really special and whatever and he had the idea of treating ego as a little pet dog that was always around him at his feet yapping 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 and during the conversation, I'd say something to Matt, and he'd say, he'd say well, e ego, down, down, down boy, down boy, down boy, ego. <laughs> and I can't create the conversation where that came up in, but it was just so perfect at the right moment at the right time. And I've picked up on that thing, and I've kept that in my mind all the time, that when I'm chatting with somebody, try to remember, Dave, the conversation isn't about you. It isn't about you brushing your ego up. It isn't about you trying to show how smart you are. Listen to the person talking and try and learn, you know. And I try to do this, but down, down, down boy, down boy. <laughs> I learned that from Matt Brown, and oh my God. He, he's, I haven't had any contact with him now in years. He is a really, really good man, good printmaker, had a real good handle on his life. I really haven't had any contact with him. He was one of the very first internet contacts I had when I got on the internet. It would have been 1996 or something like that. I started searching. Where was it? It was the Alta Vista search engine or something like that back in 1996, whatever. I must have typed in woodblock prints or something. And Matt Brown's website came up. He was on the net way before me. He had this little website showing his woodblock prints. It's a Matt Brown in New Hampshire. His website is ulupress.com. O-O-L-O-O press.com. Interesting prints. Completely different from what I do. Original stuff, of course. And a super good human being to boot. You know. Down boy, down boy. This 
is a very hard piece of wood. It's not suitable for this so well at all, you know. It would have been better to save it for a key block, but I didn't recognize what I was using. Can't be helped now, it's all gone now. I didn't have a woodblock print BBS, no, but close to it, I started uh, an email, uh, what do you call it? It's not a BBS, it was an, an email thing, a group called the Baron. I, I titled it after one of our prints, and it, uh, it's not a BBS, what do you call them when everybody has puts their email address, or oh, mailing list, a, a list serve it used to be called, I think. I started one of those, and that would have been 1996 or, or early 1997. It was called the Baron Group, and they are actually still going out there somewhere. After some years of operation, I sort of turned it over to the group because it had uh, become much bigger and wider than I could, uh, than, than, than should have been served by one person. So, uh, but yeah, that was the Baron Group. It's still out there. I think they have the baronforum.org website. So the BBS, no, but uh, a list serve, yes. We were the place to go. We even had a shop buying and sell, buying uh, woodblock tools from Japan. It was a big deal. Paper is out for today. Yes, it is. Thanks, Tom. Actually, I did forget as well. Before I went to the pool, I was supposed to take the paper out. I forgot. And while I was swimming, I remembered. And it kind of spoiled the end part of my swim this morning. Pool, uh, paper, paper out. When you get home, paper out. And I was in time. It's not Ishikawa-san today who comes early. She comes really sometimes while I'm at the pool. Today's paper is Ayumi-san. She's working on the Nikko print. And when I got back from the pool, I took her paper out. But she won't be here for till, till after 9 o'clock. So thank you for the reminder. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I still need those reminders, absolutely. We'll have to watch our time today. Today's 8.33. I do want to get those video clips shown. The video clips, the first one's about four minutes long and the second one's about four or five minutes long. So let's think about our time. 8.33. Give me, if you remind me, maybe about 8.45 or so, somewhere on there. There's one advantage to this though, it's a hard and chewy block, but there was one advantage, these small printing areas. When you have a block that has such small areas, if the printers use a bit too much pressure while they're doing it, those small areas get really hit hard and they tend to swell out once the wood gets wet. So the small areas actually get a little bit larger bit by bit by bit as a block gets older. And this one is hard, so it's going to uh, it's going to mitigate that to some extent. So that, that that's good for this, but it's not a pleasant piece of wood. You can see, oh my god.
someone's saying, did I want to be formally trained in the beginning or were there no opportunities? Both things are true. When I came to Japan, I had no idea what the situation was like. I assumed, as with anything, that there were going to be experienced people here. I knew nothing about whether there were such things as apprenticeships available. That, that was all just zero. My general character is the kind of person who sort of doesn't want to be told and trained. I didn't like school. I could never even now go to any kind of a class at all. I can't sit there while people blah, 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 blah. So Dave inherently is a let me do it by myself kind of guy. But when I came here, part of the reason I came here is because I was frustrated about not having any ability to see people who were doing this. So both things were true. I knew I wanted to get a chance to see people and learn from what they were doing. But did I have the idea that I was going to become someone's acolyte and go through a seven-year apprenticeship and all that stuff? No, I knew that was not in my character. As it turned out, it was the perfect world. There were no apprenticeships available because none of the workshops had enough work to be able to justify that. But there were people still doing it here at some level. And I had, bit by bit, now and then, a chance to visit people and see what they were doing. Printers at first, almost no chance to see carvers. And then with the cooperation of a television company one day, you know, the, the visit that became the one that's in one of our YouTube videos, Remembering a Carver. So it really, really, really worked out best all around. No apprenticeship at all, visits with printers, a number of visits with printers, two visits with a carver, which turned out to be enough. And here we are now. And the, the best part of the whole thing and the whole story is that all the way along, I and now we, we have been really, really open with everything that we've learned so that the next generation of people, the ones following me, have had access to information. And that's just, of course, the internet's there, so, so why not? But no, have I ever been anybody's apprentice? No, and I never will, of course not. Will we ever take formal apprentices? No, of course not. We don't need that sort of thing anymore. Just put the information out into the world, and those who can use it will use it. I see questions, but not so many for me. I don't even know. Did I keep my first prints from those early years? I do indeed. Of course, of course, I don't really throw much away. And in fact, they're, they're on my website. Not the Moko Hankan website, but Dave's old, clunky, ancient, personal website at woodblock.com. There's a section there called, I forget what it's called now. It's called uh, Where I've Been and Where I'm Going. And the Where I'm Going part doesn't make any sense now because it's like 20 years old. But the Where I've Been part shows the early prints that I made. They're, they're embarrassing, but nobody should be embarrassed about starting somewhere. So yeah, they're on there, woodblock.com, the where I've been section. Go ahead and have a good laugh. One, two, three, four. What's our time? 8.38. There's another area though, I know. I need to use the persuader here. What should we do first? Let's look at one of those video things. Let's switch over for a moment to video. Video here from last night. Langak is on the train, or actually maybe he's already arrived at the airport. Anyway, he can watch the, uh, he can watch the VOD once he gets to back home to Europe. Let's mode switch for a minute here. What I'm going to do, I'll temporarily put off the outside camera. We'll come back to this in a few minutes. Actually, I don't need to turn it off. It'll just get covered up by this. I have two short video clips. I don't have the, the content to show you. I'll just have to describe what happened. Dang, those of you who don't know, you, our watcher, Dang Gaksha from Europe, came here a couple of weeks ago, uh, showed me a wood block that he has carved. It's a replica uh, reproduction of an image from the Hokusai manga. He had expanded it and turned a two-page book into a single large print. He brought the blocks, showed them to us. I was very, very impressed. 
he left the blocks with me here while he went off to do his sword. Uh, he's a member of a sword uh, group. Anyway, he came back last night. Together we sat upstairs and printed his blocks. I did some printing, he did some printing. We're going to look at some of the video. One small problem, when I put the camera on last night, I wasn't using these mics and I forgot to change the setting on the camera. So the video you're going to see has no inherent sound. You can't hear our conversation and you can't hear the rubbing. I'm sorry. So we can see and I will give a little bit of a commentary. First video starts with Rangaksha himself printing and it's going to be about four minutes long. Let's have a look at this. This is last night upstairs. Oops, where are we? Okay, Rangaksha one. Oh, it's me printing first, sorry, okay. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. It's supposed to start at 4.20. One sec, just a moment. I had it right until I pressed the wrong button. It's supposed to start at 5.20. One second, please. I had this all set up and then pressed the wrong button. Okay, here he goes. This is the key block side of what he brought. It's a very, very heavy piece of European cherry wood. And we had, the first difficulty we had last night was getting this thing the proper water balance. I first sprayed some water all over it, thinking that two or three minutes later the water would soak in it didn't. The water sat on the top surface of the wood and didn't soak. This wood is so hard and dense. So we did all through this printing session last night. We had quite a lot of trouble getting the water balance right. Here he is. He's not holding the paper in quite the accepted way. This is Rangaksha. That's Yuki-san behind him, our young apprentice from China or young visitor from China. And he's sitting at the Rei Chan's printing bench. His legs are down. He's not sitting cross-legged. His legs go down under the floor. And the bench is angled just in such a way as to keep our wrist straight. You can see his wrist. It's not bent back. Because of the angle of the bench, his wrist is perfectly straight. And you can print all day long at these benches. This is a piece of test paper. It's not Japanese washi. It's just like a paper you would put in a copy machine. We're just getting the block warmed up at this point. Let's have a look. Very, very cool. Look at this. It's a double page illustration from the Hokusai manga. This is his first carving. Fabulous, fabulous achievement. and moving along right away before that block dries out even more. The next sheet of paper he's going to use is a piece of uh, softened washi. I think he put too much water on there. I'm pointing out he shouldn't have put it in the middle where all the delicate lines are. He should have put that on the outside where the... And he's going to pay for that in a minute. That water went in the wrong place. It went right on the bore where all the fine lines are. And he's going to pay for that. The, the lines will be clogged up with water. Are you still here? He's watching. Okay, got you, guy. Thank you. Did you hear what I said a moment ago? That unfortunately we didn't have the sound turned on on the camera. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> the bore won't be a solid blob of pigment, but it, it, there's too much water in that area. Now this is soft paper. I'm trying to support it in case he drops it. It's very, very difficult to carry. He did a good job there. But I was holding, I was emergency at the back, uh, insurance at the back in case he dropped it. So somebody's asking, why is the table going downward? I answered that a moment ago. It's it tilted downwards so that his wrist can stay flat. If the table was flat, his wrist would be cooked. It would be cricked up backwards. 
get a bit more. Now this is softened paper. It printed much more easily. And let's have a look at this now. Richer and blacker because the paper was softened and moistened. And there, there you are in the middle. It's a bit too much black in the middle of all that hair. Beautiful, beautiful job. Look at this. Congratulations, guy. Very good job. Fabulous job. Okay, what we did next then, we put that paper back into the package. <laughs> He's looking at this. He can't believe he printed it himself. He's happy. One happy guy. <laughs> Justifiably so. Okay, that was the first video. What we then did was we put that... Uh, we put that back into the package and we flipped the board over to the other side. And on the other side, he had carved a color block. The idea for the printers is there's going to be three colors, black and then a background gray tone, and then there would be pink on some of the, uh, the man's uh, skin tone. There is no third block. He hasn't got that ready yet. Here we are with the block for the background gray. I'm going to do the first printing on it here. And we found a small problem when we started to print this in that it wasn't gray. He had tried printing it before with some kind of a brown or red. I don't know the details. So we're getting a sort of a sepia color here. And also this block isn't finished. Some of the areas have to be carved away. And this also now, it's a very hard piece of wood, but it's too hard for a color block. We've got the same problem. The pigment doesn't want to sink into those wide areas. It wants to sit on top. Paste. I'm sorry about the audio. As I said, I screwed up last night. We were kind of chaotically running through this. I'm sorry that there's no audio on this video. The table slant, yeah, we're explaining it there, so the table slant for carving is different. The bench I'm sitting at right now, after, you, after this video is over, we can see it. The bench I'm sitting at now is tilted the other way. Printer's benches are tilted away. My feet are down on the floor underneath, and the bench is tilted away to keep your wrist straight. I'm sorry, I'm going around and around and around. I'm working on the, getting the water balance right. I forget what we were talking about here. <laughs> Yuki-san at my left there, she's pointing out, it's drying out, it's drying out. <laughs> so. You can also see around the edge of this, there's areas, the pigment is catching onto the edge. Those areas need to be carved off and he will be doing that later. This is still at test stage. Here we go, I'm gonna try and wipe it off. That should be carved off actually. We're still test printing, no big deal. Drying up. Okay, here we go. And this is on the washi paper, the, the, the cheap washi paper. Well, the idea of gray, somebody's saying, is this is gray? The idea is gray, but the block has red pigment splashed all over it. So we're getting a gray plus red. We're getting a kind of a sepia color. Rangakshas' original idea was to make it gray. Now here we are, Dave's trying to print this and he's never printed it before and it's now covered up. So I don't know really where to rub. That's why I'm so hesitant here. Where to go, where to go, not sure where to go. Gonna peek, where are we? Okay. The 
sheep were printed, and that's the one that Rangapsha printed a moment ago on the moisture. There was too much moisture. You can see those black blobs on the back. The water has come through. Here we go. Let's have a peek. Two tone. Look at this. Registration pinpoint perfect. Look at this. There's supposed to be one more color tone, a, a pink tone or a peach tone for some of the skin. This is Rangaksha's first print. There we have it. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous time last night. I apologize that I forgot to turn the microphones on. It would have been fun to hear our conversation as we were doing it. Rangaksha, congratulations. Thank you very, very much for bringing us. I'll look forward, you know, he took the prints that we made, he took them all with him last night, as he should, but I'll look forward to sometime in the post, or next year, or two years from now, receiving my copy of the finished print in three colors. I had great fun last night. Thank you very much for bringing that over. And I'd like to talk to you at some point about that wood, where you got it, maybe the people who supplied it, can we maybe get some more, I don't know. I myself wouldn't be looking at massive pieces like that, but if we could get pieces of such similar hard wood on this kind of a scale, I would be very much interested. We have resources to, to pay for such things. So if that's a possibility, let's look into this. I meant to chat with you about this last night. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. What time is it? 8.51. Let's persuade this. Oh, John's just coming in. You missed it. You missed it. Can't be helped. Real life got in the way, I guess. Okay, some very quick persuading here. I just got to cut around. There's some toenails for this rabbit. I've just got to cut around it. I think we're okay with the microphones. We're okay. Noise for three, four, five minutes. For those of you who don't know what's going to happen, noise for three, four, five minutes, and then quiet for the rest of the stream. Normal glasses off. Persuader glasses on. See you in a couple of minutes. Blocks, you know, every way you carve is the wrong way. It's just difficult, difficult grain. Why do we have special glasses for the clearing work? It's the distance. I'm hunched over closer. For this one, my face is this distance. The previous glasses, they're up. My eyes are now a bit chaotic. And we're talking distance. It's not protection from flying chips. We're talking distance. Whatever this distance is now, it's about, it's about yay far. 
that's the these glasses are set for that distance <coughs> my normal reading glasses I can't use them it's all blurred at this distance People have what bifocals, trifocals, whatever. Okay, just a second here. Okay, I think that will pretty much do us here for the noise. Okay, enough noise, quiet now. Some says, I wonder if carvers back in the day had terrible eyesight after carving for 70 years. I know, I think the work is no different than other, other work. Many, many, many crafts in any era need, you know, eyesight. It all depends on your DNA. You know, the, the guy that you saw in some of my videos, Ito-san, he didn't have an eye problem. I mean, he had glasses. But it's bizarre the way he used them. I know we've talked about this, and I think it even shows up in one of the videos I did with him. Ito-san, he's got glasses like up on his head like this, not being used. He sits there and carves. Then he picks up the block, puts his glasses in place, looks at it, mm, okay, 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 now. Then he takes his glasses off and carves again. So he was carving with no contacts and no glasses well into his 80s, and he would carve Nikugan with no glasses but use his glasses to inspect what he was doing. You tell me what it was going. In my case, I've got two, two pairs of glasses. In normal daily life, walking around town, I don't use glasses. And I think perhaps I could do a driver's test or something. I could do without them, you know, aside from the little detail of the glaucoma that's blocked a quarter of my vision. But forgetting that for a minute, I can actually see fine. I can read stuff a long, long way away without my glasses. I can actually uh, survive in society. Gift prints, 4,000 yen each, every print packed in its own. You know, I can read stuff quite well. So daily life, I don't use glasses walking down the street. But when you get closer, newspaper, computer screen, I need glasses. Closer, they're persuading, I need glasses. And in an airplane, I can't use the seat back video. It's just too close. Maybe if I took my persuading glasses in an airplane, that would work. But I can't normally watch the seat back stuff with my normal reading glasses because it's way too close. Any video watching I do on an airplane is the video from the guy who's the seat across the front.
So what's this? When I'm persuading, it's 54 dB. Talking is 64. Persuading is quiet time. Oh, it's Ayano time. Seven seconds late. I totally forgot. There's, I've, I've been off that uh, pattern because of all the holidays and funny days and, and whatever. Yeah, just one day is your holy day. Just one. Okay, whatever, 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 whatever. Step forward, step forward. Ayano-san, you're our second guest to be in this spot today. She doesn't know about it, can I? You weren't watching on the train or something? No, 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 I wasn't. Oh. But I saw a, a visitor yesterday, last night, so I was assuming that he was going to come back again. Ah, no, no, he's no? at the airport. That's Langaksha. Ah, okay. He's at the airport. Ah, no, no, okay, no. okay, okay. We saw, we saw some video clips from last night. So, no, another guest, somebody walked by, a, a, a person we didn't really know. Somebody guy. walked by, showed us uh, that he was watching the stream, and they convinced him to come in for a few minutes and say hello. This morning? Before. This morning. So, 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 about oh. 8.30 or so. A, a young man called, uh, I forget his name, young man called, I forget his name already, oh, Ian, 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 no, no, a young man called Ian. <laughs> uh, somebody we didn't know, just uh, a Twitch viewer who is in uh, Tokyo this week, okay. and came by to say hello. And already left? Well, no, well he, didn't, he didn't come in, but the, the, the chat convinced him, it's okay, oh, please okay, to come okay, in, so okay, <laughs> to okay, stay okay, for okay. a few minutes. So you're the second, uh, the second you're the second guest, guest so, this so morning. The, the interesting part is already done. Okay. So, uh, what, do you, what do you know about nuclear physics? <laughs> so all, all of yeah, our yeah, yeah, all yeah. of our guests have to be graduate <laughs> students in nuclear physics. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <true. laughs> so that is, it's a pattern, this guy. <laughs> this is spot. It's now called the Ayano spot. Is it? Is that what I said to Ian? Come in and stand on the Ayano spot. Maybe. I wouldn't I, offer any seat. To what am I gonna? Well, no. The, standing here. No, wait, 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 wait. To sit down over here means getting another camera, getting another tripod. Okay. I wasn't ready for that. Okay, please, okay, please, okay, don't, okay. don't give me a hard time there. <laughs> So, no. so the, gen <laughs> the gentleman came to stand on what I guess is now officially known as the Ayano spot. spot. <laughs> okay, well, this is just a temporarily five minutes. Uh, we had before, we had the Cameron stool, but I don't think we use that term anymore because Cameron hasn't been here for a couple of years. So, so, so. Cool. Well, stuck Cameron's <laughs> No, Cameron used to sit on the stool. Uh, okay, we okay. turned the computer and he actually ran the chat uh, for right. the last half hour mm -hmm. while, I, while I did carving. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, so, cool. so we just put some tape on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can get in the, in the camera. <laughs> it was fun. Other than that, how are you doing? <laughs> so. Nothing special. Now I spent almost all day yesterday with you uh, looking at the price chart. Oh, it work. Yeah, no, it yeah. work, of course. You know, so when Anderson comes here on Monday, usually we ask her, what were you doing on the weekend? You know, and she had three days off. It was a long weekend, the so last weekend. So, 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 so she wasn't here on Monday. But now we've had, we're struggling. Not struggling. Well, what? not struggling. Just we're digging through this crap. Mm -hmm. the, the post office is changing everything October 1st. And Aino-san's helping me with getting the new rate sheets figured out. And I've got to make sure that what I'm putting in place matches the, her way of doing it. Because Anasan came to us, what, a year, year and a half ago, or so guess, whatever. And she has morphed the job as she's been doing it. And the, the structure of our rate sheets and the structure of the zones and everything else is now changing. And I've got to put the new system in place, but with an understanding of how she wants the job changed. Because she's got ideas over the past year, you know. Do what, whatever, what shipping method to use for different countries and stuff like that. So, I got I got to chat with you about that this morning because after you left last night, I'm thinking that wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't quite do exactly what you're asking. <laughs> so, what is this? What is this? What is this? So, so, so. so. <laughs> uh, we were three, four yesterday, though. Didn't mm. I thought we fixed the problems, no, 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 okay, okay, no, okay. no. The other thing, I got, I got to confess this, of course. Remember, we were waiting for Jed to send the design for the December print. This was a couple of weeks ago. Kawasaki-san had finished her work on the number five print. Right. And Jed sent the design for number six last Thursday, yeah. just in time. Yeah. I we haven't touched that. I forgot. <gasps> I forgot, she's been waiting for one week, peacefully, quietly, not complaining, and I totally forgot. It's here waiting for me now, and as soon as this stream is over, I'm going to go into emergency mode, get this ready, and send it to her. And she, Ooh. I forgot to send our carver in Kobe, I forgot to send her her job a week ago. The new design for the December print. Look at her. Look at her face. New design for the December print came, and that's what this last week has been like. The post office, ah, so the tax people, 
everything going on, and I forgot. And Kawasaki is so polite. She's so careful not to push me. She knows I'm busy. She didn't phone and say, Dave, I know I was thinking about the new job. Is it, you know, perhaps? Because she's so kind and polite, she didn't call me. And for one week, I have totally forgotten her job. And she sat there without work. And this is a person who's paid by the job. She's not salary, so she's had a free holiday week. She's had a week of no productive work. So I think we're going to have to make sure we, we uh, when, when we do pay for this job, we've got to make sure we uh, do something. Uh, so put something extra in to pay for this because she's so polite and kind. But that's also a reflection of what this week has been for me. Another call came yesterday from the tax office. They've arranged, we're getting audited. It's already agreed, October 4th and 5th are audit day. This has been booked in advance. The, whatever, the Kyokucho or something, the, the leader of the team at the tax office phoned yesterday. I know, Aoyama-san took the call. The guy said, no, we need to talk directly to the owner. We cannot pass this message on to anybody else. So Aoyama-san puts it on to me. This is the director of the office, tax office, who is coming for the audit next next week and he's reading from a paper he says are you the owner can you confirm you're the owner of the business Mokohankan Godo Gaisha I said yes I'm the owner of the business he says, can you tell me your name please he knows this but I've got I'm, my name is uh, Deboru Davido he said your real name please I'm like, okay I got to do my middle name Deboru Davido Roy so he's got a checklist he's got to confirm that he's speaking absolutely to the owner and then he starts reading off okay Next week, I want you to understand this is what's happening. Point number one, point number two, point number three. And he read two, about two full pages of A4 stuff when I'm listening here, understanding about one quarter of it. And he's reading the riot act. This is what they are going to do next year. And I said, Papa Lang, he said, I know, Toto, Mo, Sono, Nani, do you really need to do this? He said, I know, hold each of this. So he has a legal responsibility to notify me of all this. And he's got to check, he's checking him off as he's telling me. And at the end he says, did you understand this? And I, as a lie, I said, yes, I understand this. And he said, good, blah, blah, blah. See you a week Thursday. So this is a big, big, big deal. This is not just a casual show as your books. We are getting audited as in capital A, capital U, capital D, I, T. It's a big, big, big deal. Now, we're not worried because our books are clean. We haven't hidden one freaking yen from these people. Mm -hmm. But my God, it's going to be. They're going to put us on the rack and stretch and then stretch some more. And we have nothing to confess. So. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. so, so, but even so, so, we have nothing to confess, but I'm like a little, uh, like, a, you know, are we going to be okay? So, okay. We haven't so, done anything wrong, but are we going to be So okay? it's going to be fun. I've been audited before with a lowercase a. I've had the two people come to my home in Ome, and it was a chatty conversation with T and this and that. But this one is different. We're now a company... This is a capital A audit. And yeah. I'm half looking forward to it because I'm so proud of our system here. I'm so proud of how good we are and how good we do it. But these guys might, they, you didn't cross the T here. And I'm like, well, I didn't cross the T, but the date is correct. You didn't cross the T onto the rack. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be happening. <laughs> and this is happening October 4th and 5th, one of which is a stream day. So actually, it's a week. No, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. And I will be on this stream October 4th, and I'll sign off the stream, and I'll say, okay, guys, I'll put the noose around my neck, and I'll say goodbye. So, anyway, sorry, sorry. So I've hijacked your conversation, oh, no, no, I said. So I'm sorry, right. whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's what's happening. Uh, sorry, excuse me, hijacking so. her conversation. So whatever. So, so it's two weeks from today this all happens. And if then the next stream Saturday, if I don't show up, <laughs> get me out of here. Okay, <laughs> whatever you know where I am. <laughs> Someone says stream the audit. Like, yeah, yeah, right. I doubt very much that that would be permitted, of course. And <laughs> the answer to that one is N. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, someone says, so, streaming, screaming is against Twitch in terms of service. So, 
Okay, I understand. Sorry, I've okay, rambled no, too much or whatever, fine. whatever, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go upstairs. Yeah, there are a few things I want to chat with you about. I didn't even look in your mailbox this morning. I'm sorry. I was scrambling to get ready for the stream. I haven't no, looked in your box. So I didn't pull out the spam, whatever is in there last no, night. That's so. totally fine. Uh, there's one job that I want you to get done early in the morning. Only one? Oh, there's lots of red things flagged for me in the mailbox to answer these people, uh, right? Uh, okay. One job. Yeah, did you see them? My God, Ayano-san. They are beautiful. They are beautiful, just so much more beautiful. I understand wants these. She's packing a package from America today. She has done just, I know, I didn't cry when I opened it, but, but, but I should have started crying. They are beautiful. That girl, we should just double, triple her fees. Just whatever, whatever. Okay. okay, it's here. Okay. So okay. Like it I will I, forget, so remind me again. But yeah, you thank you. Forget, okay. Sorry to sidetrack the conversation today. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. All right. See you soon, ma'am. See, See you soon. soon. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just stuff is everywhere all over. Life at the moment now is, is chaos with a capital K. Let's just get a little bit of this, try and finish this off. You know, She's doing her job so wonderfully. You know, She just chews it up, spits it out. It's done correctly. Mistakes, they just don't exist. She gets a little bit disheartened sometimes by the, the crap that happens, you know, the packages that get lost and stuff like that. But that's her job, that's okay. She just deals with it and moves on. She's a queen for us, she's absolutely wonderful. Can't say enough good things about it. The staff upstairs really, really for the most part, they're really doing their jobs well. You know. We have got a good team here. For the most part, for the most part. I sometimes bug them too much, maybe. I sometimes I stress them maybe a little bit more than I should, but I don't know. Okay, where are we here? Where are we here? How many of the seven have we hit? You're going to have to remind me. How many of the seven have we hit? Oh, the jobs to be done today on the stream, you mean? More sidetracked. Fox Moon, we did that. Rabbit Cut, we're just at the end of this. A video from Rangaksha, we did that. We've hit three out of the seven so far. What time is it? 9.12. Okay, okay, let's do that. Let's hit two more. Rabbit, you are done. Run, Rabbit, run. You go upstairs to yuki -chan. Let's hit the list. One of the lists says this letter. <clears throat> this letter came here. Actually, it's been on my desk for weeks. And I just, I never got to it. I forgot it. And also, I was a little bit nervous. It was a letter that came to us. David Bull, care of Mokohankan, from somebody I don't know, Lambert Press. And it said, please do not bend. So I thought there's a print inside. But I'm never quite sure what to do. Can I open these on stream? It might be somebody's first print that they don't want to show in public, stuff like this. I have no idea. I mean, I can't say, if you send me something right on the back, okay for the stream, I can't demand that people do that. Anyway, so I opened it the other day. And it turns out it would have been totally okay to open it on the stream. So let's have a look at this. I didn't know who this person was, but I think, given, given the content that I know, I think it's completely okay to show this on stream. Nothing will be embarrassing to somebody. It's from somebody called Lara, Lana, Lara, L-A, I can't read it. Lana, L-A-N-A. -A. And we don't need to read the whole thing, but I'm following your achievements, blah, blah, since 2003. Whoa, this is an old lady, 2003. Grateful for your generosity in explaining the process. The point being, this person has been learning, uh, learning woodblock printmaking by watching our videos and stuff. And it's a very nice thank you letter. Uh, and I finally finished my first printer. It's not of your skill and caliper, but I'm sending it along. So thank you for being an inspiring sensei to me and to so many others. Thank you. So this is, of course, thank you very much to know that we're doing this. This person has a Patreon campaign. Let's have a look at what's happening. And I think this is the thing that Patreon people actually get when they, when they uh, connect to the campaign. Let's first look at the print. So this is Lana, I guess this is her first print. She's done it in sort of a Senshafeta style, 
like we do some of our prints, like our Chibi Heroes, and it looks to be very nicely done. I'm not quite sure how many blocks here. Key block plus background plus darker background plus green. Maybe it's a plus gray. Four blocks or perhaps five, I'm not sure. And I'm seeing gradation. Oh, there's two greens. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six blocks, perhaps. I'm not actually quite sure what I'm looking at. Obviously, it's a tree with snow and a decoration, but I'm not quite sure are these... Uh, I'm sorry for my ignorance. I'm not quite sure what the green things represent. Are they... They're not lights. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's a very pleasantly made, nice little print. And there's a story. We, we won't go through the whole thing, but there's a story here. The Arbor Senshafta Spring Snow. And it's part of a series she's calling the Tree of Life. And there's quite a story that goes along with it all. And it's part of her Patreon campaign. And let's put this on so you can go and have a peek. Patreon.com Lana Lambert. I don't know, I didn't follow the link. I don't know what details are there. Perhaps the lady's looking for support for her printmaking activities or perhaps something else, I don't know. But a very nice little presentation. And it's really, really funny to see somebody has used the same font and the same kind of layout that we use for our own similar presentations when we send out our Patreon prints. I'm also using Adobe Garamond Pro, as is this lady, and it's really, really fun. Uh, Dale Evans over in America, he said the same thing. He made similar little packages for his prints. And he copied our font. He fo copied my kerning. He copied everything on the way we do our stuff. But it's really, really so neat to see this. Garamond is a, is a cool... I, I like it. It's a classically attractive font. Anyway, Lana, if you're here, I don't have any idea if you're part of these streams. Thank you very much for sending this. And those of you who are interested, there's the link one more time. Patreon.com. Lana Lambert. Thank you for sending this, man. I'm always eager to see people's first prints, of course. And this one is very, very nicely done. There's an Instagram as well. Good. Thanks for the link, Corinne-san. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, checked off. This letter, done. So there's two more. The KJ6, the protector. We won't get to those. Show and tell. Let's finish off our tea book. Lots of Garamond fans in the chat. I've had trouble with Garamond though. We do, we make our own PDFs here, part of my manager system, when we print invoices and stuff. Just a minute, let me get rid of the flask. We make our own PDF files here. I'm using a, a, a framework in the background called TCPDF for making the PDFs. So we make paper invoices for those cases where we need paper invoices. Most of it's online, it's not necessary. But every now and then we do need to make printed physical paper invoices. And I've been using Garamond for some of them, and I've been using Georgia for some of them. It's a, it's a font that's built into Mac OS systems. And I'm having trouble that when I make it with Georgia or Times Roman, something like this, the pages are printable with no problem. But when I make my PDF with Adobe Garamond, it prints well on some printers, but it won't print on other printers. And I thought, I was, that's really, really puzzled me. And I think it's an embedding issue. If the printer has some fonts already inside it, it can handle it. But if the printer doesn't already have that font, then uh, it doesn't work. So I've got to work on my embedding. Nothing to do with these streams. Okay, the last few minutes of our stream here. So, postscript issue or embedded font issue or font already present on the printer. One of these things. And I've had trouble with Garamond, specifically Garamond. It's obviously a licensed font, so maybe it's not present in the printer that we were using. I don't know. Someone's saying, use Calibri. We're not a Windows house here. We're a Mac house. So, okay, let's get this done. 
This is a book of woodblock prints that are related to the tea ceremony. We'll quickly flip through. I think there are three prints that we haven't seen yet, and we still haven't seen the print of the tea ceremony itself. So we have about 10 minutes left here. So let's go. Someone's saying you need to install the front on the printer. The problem is it's our associates. We're okay ourselves. We send the PDF file to somebody else and they're unable to print it. So we can't ask them to install fonts. It's not an in-house problem. It's a problem with the people we are selling stuff to. Okay, anyway, enough about prints, uh, printers. Here we go. Let's recap what's happened here. Let's flip through the early parts of this album. It's an album of 15 prints plus a frontispiece, all carefully woodblock carved. Again, let's just quickly flip through for those who are not familiar with the concept. We're showing the course of a full day special tea ceremony where three guests are invited to somebody's home. This is before the guests arrive. The woman of the house and her attendants are getting the materials ready. They're pulling them out of their boxes. They are washing and getting everything ready. The tools that will be used for the tea ceremony. Let's zoom in to see these things step by step. The guests then arrive. There's going to be three guests today. We've seen these in detail before. Here we are getting ready at the tea house in the garden through which you always enter through a hatch. Nobody could go in with a sword. Nobody can go in standing up. You have to uh, deprecate yourself to enter the tea room. This lady has already gone in and she's putting her sandals outside. This lady will be going in in a moment. Inside the tea room, they had their morning uh, aisatsu, the uh, formal uh, introductions and formal welcoming. Not a ceremony, but the formal. Here we are. This is now in the back room. This is in the kitchen. The lunch is being prepared by the attendants. We then have, before lunch, the woman of the house is getting the charcoal ready for where the tea ceremony will be held in that hole in the floor later on. The formal lunch was then served. Sake was also present. This lady has had enough. After the formal lunch, as we saw in the previous stream, the ladies went outside into the garden to have a little bit of a surprising smoke. It turned out that upper class women in this period, this is 1896, did actually smoke. The attendants, while the other women are out in the garden, are changing the flowers and changing the scroll in the tea room itself. And again, this is where the tea will be served. The lady of the house then bangs the gong to bring everybody back in for the ato iri, the second entrance. The ladies will now be heading back into the tea room. Outside, the attendants are getting ready. They are taking down the screens that were protecting the windows of the tea room and they are just doing some general gardening. We now get to the final three prints, the ones we haven't yet seen. The next print is the core of the whole set. This is the tea ceremony itself happening. Now, it doesn't really look any, anything dramatically different from the other prints we've seen, but this is the actual tea ceremony. And we have a problem with this print. There is a gray mess at one area of the print. And that's because this album has been kept closed all the time. And on the op opposing face, we have, they've used some kind of metallic pigment. It's gray mica to make that wall shiny. And that material, as the book has been closed, has transferred across. Once we get this ready for storage, we will be put an interleave sheet in. It's too late to save this one, but there should have been an interleaving sheet in there. But let's look at what's happening. This is the tea ceremony itself happening here. Let's find a spot, zoom in. Well, I'm not any kind of expert or knowledgeable at all about the tea ceremony. We obviously have the, 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 she's got her dipper for the hot water. There's some kind of uh, kettle down in there. And next to it, we have her implements, the whisk for whisking the tea. This perhaps is the water pot for supplying water. And I don't actually see a tea bowl or any tea present. 
hidden behind this lady's head? I don't know. Very quiet, nothing happening at all. This is actually perhaps the least interesting image in the whole set of 15 prints. It's supposed to be the core point of the ceremony, but as a woodblock print and as a design, this one is perhaps the least interesting. Is that the tea bowl there, waiting? She's going to bring it forward in a moment. Hmm, I think we've got a scoop. There's the whisk there. There's the scoop. There must be the tea caddy must be behind here. It seems a bit funny that this core image of the whole set, why they would sort of hide the implements. Maybe there's a message here that it's uh, quieter and more private. I don't know. To me it seems a little bit of a letdown after all the preparation, 11 prints preparing for this, and then we have sort of nothing really happening. And the title of this one, this is interesting because the title of this one and the next one combine. The title of this print is, let me skip to my cheat sheet, this is Koi Cha, Thick Tea. Koi Cha. Because the next print, let me zoom out a bit so we can see it. The next print is called Usu Cha, Thin Tea. And we have moved. The next print is Usu Cha Hiro Ma. Usu Cha, thinner tea in the next room, a wider room. They have come out of the tea ceremony room into another room in the house. There is another kettle here and they're having lighter, thinner tea. Usu Cha is, it would be thin, a thin tea. Maybe it's a, you know, just whatever, a normal green tea, not the matcha. There are three scrolls in the alcove and there are smoking sets again spread around the floor. This print to me is much more interesting than the print of the tea ceremony itself. We get season here. This is Ajisai, so we're looking at June. Fingers, and I can't, I never get all these fingers. <laughs> these ladies have to be depicted as elegant, slender, elegant, and tall, and that includes the fingers. No piano legs or, or stubbiness on these people. I see a smoking set. I'm not sure, is this calligraphy? What are they doing? Or is it. Uh, Small scrolls. I'm not sure what we're looking at here. Snacks. Chopsticks and snacks. And another kettle. Gradation all over the kettle. And again, I'm sorry about this. We can't really see this. These areas that you're seeing as solid black, they're not. There's patterns built into all these solid black areas, and I can't get them to shine right. I'm really limited in how much. Here we are. Got it, got it, got it. Can we see it? Here we are. We've got it. The show? It's black on black, the patterns. Black on black. That's done with Shomen Zuri. The shiny pattern there is rubbed onto the front of the print after the rest of the printing has been done. And this is all over the place on these things. I haven't done that, try to show you each one of those, but it's everywhere. Every time you see a black pattern, it's, it's done with Shomen Zuri. Okay, there we have it. And there is actually now just one more print left. Oh, good morning, Hosuna san hello, hello, hello. There's one more print left, and this is the guests are heading home. It's all over and they're on the way. And this is Kairu, Kairu Tokoro. Nothing to do with frogs. Kairu, leaving Tokoro, the point at which the guests are leaving. Let's zoom in again. 
Now I myself, I've never, ever, ever been to an event like this. I never will be. This is something I would actually avoid. If I had an invitation to an event like this, I really actually wouldn't want to participate. There is a thing, the tea ceremony is a thing. If you're going to do it and study it and do it, obviously there's content there. For Dave, it kind of seems a bit, for me to attend, it would be pretentious. I wouldn't understand the nuance, I would just be clumsy, I wouldn't know what I was seeing. So Dave would rather just sort of not have the experience than have a sort of a uncomfortable fake experience. So for me, I've never been to this sort of thing and wouldn't want to. Before we came to Japan, one of, the, one of our family friends, I forget his name, was it Clifton? I can't remember. He was deep, 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 deep into this and a major part of his life was doing tea, having the influence, having a room, getting all ready for it. But for me, no, it just doesn't seem like something I would want to do. Okay, that's the last print in the book. But one thing I want to show you before we sign off. We're going to go back three or four prints. The other day, after we showed you some of these prints on the stream, I closed the book and looked at it myself. And I noticed something that I thought might be fun to point out to you. I think on this print we were showing, we were looking at the greens in the garden and there's so many different greens. There's dark green, medium green, light green, there's a shading green. And I said something like, do the customers of the day, the people who bought these prints, did they really notice all these things? How much is normal and how much is excess? And then I noticed after I'd spoken to you, one more thing. The bamboo fence behind the ladies is done in a light green color. But they have also taken the time and trouble to put a second green in there. Not all over the place, just this one and that one and maybe another couple down the line. They have randomly picked out a couple of these bamboos to do a darker color. And I this, this went right by me last time. I was too busy looking at all the leaves. Did they need to do this? Well, easy, quick answer is no, of course. If it hadn't been there, none of us would ever, 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 ever have said, gee, that fence is a bit boring. Or would we have? Just enough here and there a touch, and it's filled in what could have been a, quote, boring space in the print. The extra time and trouble to put it over the top. Somebody says it's all in the details. The publisher is Akiyama Buemon, a man for who which I will just be uh, all my life, all the rest of my life, I will just be in slack-jawed amazement at the achievements he forced and he pushed and he paid his workmen to create. He didn't have to do any of this, but he had a vision and he put some people to work just to make this glorious, glorious stuff. And I hope that here at Mokohankan we can catch just whatever a percent of what this guy was able to do. There's our book. Thanks very much. Four of the images are online. The rest of the photography has been done. It's now just waiting for me to find some time in the evenings to get the rest of it online. I'll try and get it done without too much more delay. The photography's done. It's just waiting for me to get it online. Okay, it's Thursday morning. I am now out of here. I'm not sure what work I'll be doing here Saturday morning. All the little jobs now are cleaned up for me. I'm not sure what I'll be doing. I'm sure we'll think of something. We have two weeks left before the end of my life with our tax audit. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. See you in on Saturday, two days from now. Thank you very much. See you then. We have a floater. Take off. We have a floater. I saw in the news last night, SpaceX has landed something for the 17th time. One booster has been up and down 17 times. Absolutely incredible. Our little floater just hangs there all the time. Oh, I thought she was going to bump into it. <laughs> no. Okay, time to sign off, gang. Thanks very much. See you in a couple of days. Bye for now.